Mr. Shapiro, thank you for joining us today. I think it is important that you're here um, as one of the leading conservative voices in the country. And, and the country has, in the last couple of weeks, talked a lot about and Googled uh, Prog Project 2025. It's one of the most Googled uh, search terms right now. And uh, you're not going to get any censorship from me. So uh, I just wanted to know, from your perspective, I think it would help us understand on just like a scale of zero to 100 percent, how much do you support Project 2025? All right, so this is Eric Swalwell. And you can see here, I guess his most recent post on Twitter is what is Project 2025? It's forced marriage. The backers of Project 2025 want forced marriage and Donald Trump supports them. A very interesting take there, Mr. Swalwell. But, uh, for all intents and purposes, intensive purposes, which one is it? I don't know. You guys know what I'm talking about. If you want the, the, the truth on Project 2025, then make sure you go check out Squirrel Tribe. And she's got a video here. Project 2025 is scaring everybody. And this is why. I wonder if you Google Project 2025 Squirrel Tribe, if she'll pop up. Let's see. Project. He said it's the most Googled. 2025 scroll tribe and the channel pulls up come on google get your shit together all right guys google our watch scroll tribe video let's see if we can get that thing up to like a thousand likes and i bet then it'll pop up on google when you search it we'll check back but Ben Shapiro, he is a straight up savage. When asked about this Project 2025, you're not going to get any censorship out of me. And uh, his response is pretty epic. So uh, here, check this out. Mr. Shapiro, thank you for joining us today. I think it is important that you're here um, as one of the leading conservative voices in the country. And, and the country has, in the last couple of weeks, talked a lot about and Googled uh, Prog Project 2025. It's one of the most Googled uh, search terms right now. And uh, you're not going to get any censorship from me. So uh, I just wanted to know from your perspective, I think it would help us understand on just like a scale of zero to 100 percent, how much do you support Project 2025? I think like President Trump, I haven't looked all that deeply at Project 2025, but it seems that Democrats on this committee sort of like Peter Pan and Tinkerbell, uh, if they say Project 2025 enough, their presidential candidate becomes alive again. <laughs> and so, well, let's just talk about pieces of it, and you, I guess you can tell me if you support it. Um, you probably want less bureaucracy, right? I do. I want less bureaucracy. You want more efficiency? I do. I want less effic more efficiency. You want taxpayer money spent wisely? I do. Congrats on becoming a Republican. Yeah. <laughs> My parents would be proud. Um, <laughs> Oh, man. Ben Shapiro, based. It's funny how the, these Democrats, they try and... Let's, let's double check this. Where's Matt? So Matt, or Eric, I don't know why I called him Matt. He's he's out of... Okay, not only is he a Democrat, but he's out of California. So there's strikes two and three right there. <sighs> they try to use reason and logic. Everything that the right Republicans, conservatives are for against us as if it's a bad thing that we want less bureaucracy and we want, you know, uh, more, uh, a, a better fiscal policy and well-rounded spending and less waste of taxpayer dollars. But speaking of savage, here's another with a, with a, with a great zinger, John Kennedy discussing the future of spending and our national debt and the way that the Democrats want to manage these funds and ultimately ruin, wreck, and destroy this economy and this country and the world. Here, check this out. I think we can, what's the debt going to be 10 years from now? Right. So our projection is then over $50 trillion or over 122% of GDP. Yeah. Well, Dan, looks to me like we better do something. I mean, we, we can sit here and debate the tax cuts and, and uh, 
you, you talk about the tax cuts don't work. I don't know how you know that because the pandemic skewed all economic results. But we better do something, huh? Do you think we can sustain the spending? No, the, the risks are mounting with higher interest payments and higher debt. Um, and, and that's, as you said, that's, that's why action must be taken. Yeah, so look at this. John Kennedy put this up four hours ago. As soon as President Biden took office, his administration started putting its radical open border agenda ahead of kids' safety. When officials on the ground raised concerns, the Biden admin overrode them. <sighs> if it ain't one thing, it's another. But if we were to survive this invasion, this war that we're in the middle of right now with Biden starting it, causing it, not trying to end it, our debt would increase to levels that over 100%, 122% above GDP. We would literally be robbing Peter to pay Paul. We would be the definition of a country living paycheck to paycheck, buried in debt. But then you see folks out here trying to argue fact, reason, and logic with Ben Shapiro and trying to clown him on being a Republican and knowing how to manage his money. But it's not just him. This is starting to uh, sink into some people out there taking the TikTok and regurgitating and, and spreading and sharing more of this leftist propaganda. Listen to this garbage. I've been trying to figure out a way to make this video for a while, but with the Supreme Court news that just came out today with Trump, I figured today is better than any other day. Um, I voted for Trump in 2016, and I was deep in the Christian conservative world for a very long time, and here are some things that I know when it comes to that group of people. Before you want to come at me and be like, I hate you, you ruined our country for voting for Trump, it's something that I regret every single day, but I also learned so much coming out of that journey, and I feel like I do now have insight into how conservative Christians think. Um, it's something I regret every single day, I hate that I'm going to have to tell my children someday that I voted for that man, but that's just the consequences of my own actions and not taking initiative to research and study things that were going on in our country before then. Okay, I was raised Christian, evangelical, very conservative. Basically, being a Republican in that world is in alignment with being a Christian. If you are a Democrat and you are a Christian, you're definitely kind of considered an outcast and you're definitely considered to be brainwashed. I'm not here to say Democrats have all the answers. The Democratic Party has its whole set of issues, but that's not what I'm talking about today. The thing that people have to understand is that the people in that particular set and in that world are in a cult. It's just plain and simple. From a very young age, we were conditioned and brainwashed into believing that our people, Christianity, American Christianity, were being persecuted and that it was the country's agenda to get rid of all of the Christians. It doesn't make any sense now that I'm out of it. I'm just sharing what that group of people believes. And they do a very good job at making you really afraid that someday you are going to be persecuted and killed and beheaded for being a Christian. I was in junior high when Columbine happened and the big story that came out of what that school shooting was not that we need to take initiative and protect children and make gun laws. The big story was a completely fabricated lie about Cassie Bernal being killed because the shooter asked if she believed in God and she said yes and she was murdered. It came out to be a complete lie, but that's not something we talk about. But that story just ingrained the belief that was already there that Christians are being targeted. You also have to understand that when you are raised and told from a very young age that you are the only group of people that have the absolute universal truth, it is very hard for anybody to come along and tell you that you may be wrong because they have been brainwashed into believing that every single person is wrong. It doesn't matter if you have evidence, it doesn't matter. So when a man like Trump comes along and he begins catering to those fears that are already there and wanting to use their fear of being persecuted to his benefit, to them, it's just the only candidate that makes sense because their safety at the end of the day is all that matters. Coming out of that world and seeing it for what it is now sometimes makes it harder for me to feel like there's any hope to get through to that group of people because I knew what it felt like to be in that mindset. In the 2016 election, I fasted before the election so that Hillary would not win because I had just believed what they told me that Hillary was going to be the downfall of America. And you have to keep in mind, a lot of these churches have big name prophets that come in and they use the name of God to try to sway the vote. And when you are conditioned to believe that you will go to hell if you are not following the word of God, that's a really hard, a really hard journey to go on to look at the fact that maybe there's another side to this. So it's real, there's a lot of tension for me because I feel like I do have a lot of empathy for that group of people, but I also have a lot of anger at the same time. Yeah. Uh, so the comments on this one, what she's describing is the textbook definition of grooming. <laughs> uh, the irony of these in evangel evangelical Christians fearing persecution while doing so many horrific atrocities to others is mind numbing. She's so brave for telling the truth. Everyone is entitled to their religion, but keep it out of politics. And speaking of which, 
uh, she mentioned these big names. They're trying to sway voters. This is the most recent one. This is the most recent one. George Clooney urges Biden to step aside or he'll lose. Says he, he's clearly declined. Hollywood actor just hosted ritzy fundraiser for Biden. Says he was the same man we all witnessed at the debate. There's uh, George Clooney with wife Amal. There's George Clooney with Joe Biden. But I want to read you guys some more comments, especially from the standpoint of uh, <laughs> um, what folks think about George Clooney, a non-elected. Well, he's not even an official. He's just non-elected. He's just some civilian, basically, inserting his thoughts and opinions and financial motivation into politics, probably carrying dual citizenship. I think he lives in Italy or something. Sounds like politicians and Hollywood stars panicking. Why? Where's the children? Joe Biden uh, don't want to leave until after he thinks he's coming president or he loses the presidency. And then he can guarantee you that's why, what's going on behind his mind. George Clooney lives in his Hollywood bubble. He's ridiculous. Who gives a shit about Clooney? Great video, Kevin. Clooney is a CIA op. Clooney makes my skin crawl. <laughs> Why don't you tell us how you really feel? Somebody actually did. So now Mr. Clooney is making political decisions for the world leaders. Think about this carefully, people. An actor, which you did not elect, is telling world leaders what to think. How ridiculous has this world gotten? It is like going back to the Middle Ages where clueless aristocrats are in charge of the world. They have nothing but the ancient or the accident of birth to put them in power. Absurd. George Clooney is worried that he will lose power. Both interviewer and celebrity are ridiculous. If he did not know a week ago that Biden was a puppet and ill, then he is a fool. But, uh, yeah, so this one here, this comment was actually pretty interesting. I like to know what you guys think about it. And it says, don't, uh, I'm sorry, do you worry about Trump starting a war like Biden has? Apparently there. Challenging my thoughts and opinions on Trump versus Biden. Are you worried about Trump going after his political opponent like Biden has? Are you worried about Trump showing weakness like Biden is? Are you worried about Trump embarrassing the United States like Biden has? Are you worried about Trump being a puppet leader like Biden is? Are you worried about living in a country where no one's above the law versus living in a country where no one's above the Democratic Party? It's actually edited because it said something different when I first read it. And now it's, it's, it kind of reads a little different. And maybe this is like some sort of sarcastic wording and phrasing of asking the question if you're worried about Trump being as bad as Biden by pointing out all of Biden's flaws, for which I don't think anybody's worried about with Trump. What do you guys think? Let me know. Drop a comment. Give a like. Subscribe. See you guys later.